What's up guys, you're watching Life by TCG. Got a video for you today on Flesh and Blood. This is a new type of video I'm doing where I'm talking about a spoiler card. So my last Flesh and Blood video was on the uh, Teklovossen hero, which I was playing for a while as like my introduction to the game. I've explored out further into a few other heroes and Vincent is one of the ones I've been trying. So this most recent card is a Runeblade card, so Vincent can play it. Um, and I've seen some people saying that like maybe this card's really good or like a bit of discussion about uh, how playable it's going to be. So I just thought I would uh, quickly discuss it. I'll put the video for the real spoiler in my description so you can go and watch that if you want. Um, but I've got the picture of it on the screen here. This new card, Sonata Galaxia. Um, cost XX, it's a red. Costs one less to play for each rune chant you control. Search your deck for a rune blade aura with cost X or less, put it into play. And if X is two or more, this gets go again. And it's a two block. So, whether this card is good or not, we have to talk about what aura are you searching with it. So that's what I will do in this video. These are all of the Runeblade auras in the game. There's only seven. Uh, so I don't need that much time to qu quickly talk about all of them and whether they're relevant or not. And on the right here I've got Spellbound Creepers, which is obviously not a Runeblade aura, but is an important gameplay element when we're thinking about how to make use of Runeblade non-attack actions. Um, so I'm probably going to be referencing this card a lot as I go through. So starting with the first aura, Dimensional Crossroads. It's the only Shadow Runeblade aura in the game, so um, at the moment Vincent can use it, but Viserai can't. In theory, this card is quite powerful. Getting one free arcane damage every time you play a card from your banish zone is pretty solid. Um, can be up to two damage per turn if you're playing like an attack plus a Pupus Turings or an attack plus a Funeral Moon, like this kind of thing. Um, but the problem with this card is just the last clause on it, right? When you lose life, it self-destructs. That's really awkward. So just playing around Blood Debt with that text is quite challenging. Um, like you can't always play a card that you banish. Sometimes you have to sit on it for one turn. So either you're doing that and taking the Blood Debt, in which case your Dimensional Crossroads is dying, or you're using Vincent's hero power to banish a non-blood debt card, which means you're basically wasting an entire card just to get one rune chant, which is pretty suboptimal as well. So like that's already bad enough, but then you get to the fact that like you often want to damage yourself in your own turn. Like you play a shadow action, you take one so that you get an extra rune chant from your deathly whale closing the chain. Or you can't even attack with your Flail of Agony, right, with this in play, because it, that costs you one life to do that. So all of these factors, like, Dimensional Crossroads is just too hard to make work, I think. And um, being able to put it into play with the Sonata doesn't really change that. Next card, Sting of Sorcery. Um, this is kind of interesting because it's the only Runeblade Aura that costs zero, so you can search for this for free with the Sonata no matter how many Rune Chants you have. But because it only costs zero, it doesn't get go again when you put it into play with the Sonata. Like, even though the action itself has go again, you don't get this go again when you put it into play with the Sonata, only if you cast it normally. So the fact you lose go again with this, like, you you need an action point after this card resolves, so you can play attacks and deal the damage. And you can't like creepers into this unless you already attacked anyway so like how are you setting that up are you playing like a eloquence token into the sonata or are you playing like a go again attack then um using creepers and then playing this and then playing more attacks after that like that's pretty hard to do and then it's just in general not really that smart to build a Vincent deck with like a kind of go wide strategy that can take advantage of this because um, the way rune gate works means you basically just want to be playing one big attack every turn and that's it um, 
like if you play a small go again attack it's going to trigger all your rune charts and then you're not going to be able to play a big rune gate card um like the efficient rune gate cards themselves don't have go again so you like need to combo that with more rune skies and that's like extra cards that are not more attacks to work with this i mean yeah, it's just not really uh, a realistic option so second second rune blade aura that's not really playable at all moving on to the next one now here's one that is very playable um you know most of the vincent decks are already playing this card rune blood incantation so one cost aura with go again you get one rune chant every turn for three turns so this is very good in Vincet. Um, in Vincet, you want your rune blood. You're sorry, you want your rune chart generation to be spread over multiple turns. Um, so you can compare this card to a card like Read the Runes, right, which just gives you three rune chants immediately for no cost. Although that card doesn't have go again, so. Uh, in a way, you might think that getting the three rune chants straight away is better because you don't have to wait. You know, like it could be towards the end of the game where like you need the damage output immediately. Um, so waiting for your waiting three th turns for your three rune chants is worse. Um, but the way that Vincent works is that to maximize the efficient use of your rune chants, you want them. To be used not only for damage but also for mana essentially by paying for rune gate cards because there's no no rune chant generation is free so to maximize every rune chant you want to be using those rune chants to pay for rune gates and not only using them for damage so imagine a situation where you have three rune chants on one turn and three rune chants on the next turn in that situation you're going to be able to use your action point on each of those turns to play like a Vantum Banshee or uh, any rune gate card that costs three. Whereas if you have six rune charts on the first turn and zero rune charts on the second turn, it's still six damage worth of rune charts. But you can only use that action point to play like one Vantum Banshee on the first turn and no card on the second turn. So you essentially wasted three mana of rune charts that way and also if you can't play anything at all you would have wasted your action point as well so that's why a rune blood incantation is a very good card in Vincent. um and while read the runes it's like okay like some lists are definitely playing that card as well um it's generally worse than rune blood incantation and also just the fact that it doesn't have go again on its own is a bit awkward like the most common use of that card is you creepers into it after you already attack to help you set up your next turn which is you know not a bad thing at all um but as i'm saying like rune, can rune blood incantation is generally a bit better i think so the question then is does the deck want to play like effectively more copies of rune blood incantation than just the three red ones that you start with i mean of course you could play yellow rune blood incantation that was already an option but the fact that it only makes two rune chants is not really worth it so do would you play like sonata galaxia as additional pseudo copies of rune blood incantation and i think the answer is maybe yes like you can compare it to read the runes essentially so both read the runes and sonata for rune blood incantation is an action without going in so it's going to be castable in like a similar um range of situations and the fact is that um like read the runes you only need well like read the runes Sonata for Rune Blood Incantation is going to cost zero some amount of the time. Um, because you only need two rune chants to do that. So in some situations, it's going to be actually just outright better than playing Rune Blood Incantation normally. Like if you imagine a hand that's like Deathly Whale, Shadow Puppetry, uh, Sonata, then you like banish the Deathly Whale play shadow puppetry 
rune gate the deathly whale cross the chain make two rune chants with the go again you play sonata for zero because you have the two rune chants so like if your last card there was a rune bud incantation you wouldn't have any resource to play the one for it unless you had tunic up whereas with this it's like read the runes you can play it for zero except you get the rune blood incantation at the end rather than a read the runes itself which i've just described as probably better so like just just for this interaction the fact that sonata can function as essentially like a maybe arguably upgraded read the runes like it might be worth a slot in the deck just for that so that's that's pretty interesting that's an application that i only sort of realized after i thought about it a little longer um So yeah, uh, Rublet Incantation, possibly a good reason to play the new Sonata Galaxia. Next card, Blessing of Occult. This is just like, kind of read the runes that you can find with Sonata. And everything I said previously about Rublet Incantation's effect being generally better than read the runes is, like you want to spread out your enchantment generation over several turns. Like that's still true. Overall, I think Blessing of Occult is much worse of a card in the deck than um rune blood incantation as a sonata target but maybe you would want to play just one copy of this just to have the option to find it depending on how many sonatas you have as well because maybe there are situations like if you have oblivion in your deck you want to be able to build up to like a big rune chant turn or like as i said it's a situation towards the end of the game where you don't want to wait extra turns to get those rune chants you want to have all the rune chants three at once so just for those kind of like more specific situations you might just play one copy of this just to have like a sonata target that can do something slightly different but overall i think this is not that strong like you would i don't think you would play more than one copy of it this card is also in this realm of like set up cards that give you rune chance i think this one is the worst one because of the way that it works with the go again and like the window when it triggers it's basically impossible to use this card in any situation where you don't use creepers which is probably makes it like too narrow to be playable um like the situations i've seen this card described where it could be used the first is you attack and then before uh damage you activate creepers to sonata into this but if you do that you have to play sonata after your rune chants have already popped from you attacking which means that you're paying two mana to find this with Sonata because it's not being reduced because you control no rune chance. Plus you're paying one to activate creepers. So effectively what you're doing is you're turning your Sonata into like a three cost Morvrian Skies that doesn't give the attack go again and you're putting a counter on your creepers which is like pretty bad overall to be honest. And then otherwise if you don't want to use it that way you have to like let your go again attack resolve so your attack had go again somehow, so you either the Morvian Skies or Psychic Puppet Treat it. Then after you attack, you creepers into this, and then you have to have like a second attack to follow it up to make sure you can trigger this immediately and not let your opponent blow this up by attacking you. So like that's not very easy to do either. Like like a like a two attack go again turn plus sonata like it's very very narrow so while the ceiling on this is potentially higher than these ones because situations where you can get three rune charts immediately it's you possibly do big turns um the fact that you need to invest a lot of things to make it work means that it's only going to be good in those like top percentage of your range of turns that you have and like, the rest of the time it's like very bad or almost useless probably that's not playable but like still maybe worth thinking about next on to the last two auras that do like very completely different things next one rune blood barrier so this one is very interesting with the Sonata because now we're into auras that cost three. 
So the problem with th- these last three ones that were sort of playable in different ways is that they only cost one, which means that you're losing the go again if you are playing them with the Sonata. But now we have a, a new aura here that costs three, which means that you are getting go again if you're playing it from Sonata. Now, you do, ne- you do need to have at least six rune chants to do this if you want to make it totally free. Like, it could be reasonable if you control like four or five maybe as well, because then at least you're still getting a discount on this. But let's say you have six rune chants, and that's like not totally unreasonable in Vincent. Like, Oblivion is a card that only functions in Vincent. Not everybody is playing it, but like having six rune chants is not out of the question. Then you play your Sonata free fighting this, you get four more rune chants. Like, that's quite strong thinking about it in kind of like a vacuum zero mana getting four rune chants with go again is not really an effect that exists anywhere else the obvious one is of course revel in rune blood which does almost exactly that but the thing is that with revel in rune blood it's only playable in the like very specific situation that you um you already played a non-attack action and you already attacked so you need to immediately have another attack to like follow it up with otherwise you so that you might not have had a non-attack action to even use it or you know you're missing half of the piece of the puzzle and then after you play revel in rune blood you need to have another attack to immediately follow it up to use the four rune shards um otherwise they're going to be destroyed at the end of the turn and essentially wasted and in Vincent, you're always going to have another attack because you can always just attack with flail if you want but that's not really ideal because then your rule and rune blood is just kind of like a um, awkward sort of like blaze headlong zero to sixty kind of thing. Like it's just four damage with go again for no mana, which is not really ideal in Vincent. Like as I said, you to maximize your rune chant effects, you want to be using them in a way that they not only deal damage but also make mana. And circling back, that's essentially the exact problem with this rune blood barrier as well the fact that it only makes it makes rune chants in a very efficient way but the fact that it only does that in board states where you already have a lot of rune chants means that it's not a good card because vince is just not interested in pushing up to like nine or ten rune chants in play because all of your rune gate cards cost at most four so you're using your rune blood rune chant generation in an inefficient way because you're not using it to generate mana only damage so i don't think this is a good card in vincent the using it for the defensive option like using your rune chance to tank damage is kind of interesting but i can't really get a sense of like when i would want to do that um because considering the card just by itself it would be like four rune chance worth of damage protection which is kind of like a weird sort of um fate for scene or something right like it's just zero mana protect you from four damage i mean it's kind of interesting in the fact that like that's all split means that it's good versus like kadachis or whatever like you can just trade one rune chant per one damage attack which is nice that it's so granular like that but i don't know like what deck i would want that against consistently so it's a very interesting card with the sonata and it's worth keeping in mind especially for a different deck like viscerai we're going up to like nine or ten rune chance with this for zero amount to go again is actually quite strong but for vincent like i think it's only if you can figure out like a defensive matchup where you want this if you're just using it as like a four damage worth of rune chance go again i don't think it's worth it like the effort to set it up is quite a lot um and you're just not really taking advantage of the rune chance that you're making and then this last card is also another interesting aura looming doom so it's kind of similar to dimensional crossroads in the effect that it does it just sits in play and ticks damage over time um which is quite interesting and possibly strong 
it's, it, it's notable that this is damage to any target, so you can kill like Chromite with it, which is not irrelevant. Um, and like with Rune Blood Barrier, well, no, actually, never mind. But it does cost three, which means that you're getting go again if you are playing it with. Um, the Sonata and unlike Rune Blood Barrier like if you could get go again with this starting with no Rune Chance it would be much much stronger right but you can't because that's not what Sonata does but with this one like you only ever want to play it even in Vincere in a situation where you have a lot of Rune Chance already so Imagine a situation where you have like only three rune chance and you play Looming Doom. Your Looming Doom is going to get three ca uh, three counters on it, which is worth six damage. But you had to sack three rune chance to do that, which is three rune chance worth of damage. So the net gain in damage from your Looming Doom is only plus three in that situation where you sack three rune chance, which means that you spent three mana on this card just for it to do only three damage, which is a bad trade, right? For your Looming Doom to be worth more damage as a card, you have to sack more Rune Chance into it. So if you have 6 Rune Chance that you sack into your Looming Doom, then your Looming Doom is worth 3 damage. And now you're getting like... Looming Doom becoming like a 3 mana card that's worth 6 damage, which is like getting into the range where... Um, Like, it's becoming, like, a decent card to think about actually playing. So the fact that, like, it costs three with... Um, putting it into play with Sonata is almost, like, all upside, basically. Because you, you wouldn't want to play it with few rune charts anyway. You probably want to have, like, six or more. Now you're putting it into play with costing zero because it's discounted by all your rune chance. Like, casting three mana cards in Vincent is actually quite hard. The only one that you consistently do, really, is, um... Putrid Stirrings. But, like, that's usually not a card that you even play in the turn that you draw it. You have to, like, banish it, sit on it for one or two turns while it's, like, dealing blood, de blood debt damage to you, then wait until you draw a blue so you have, like, more cards to work with, then you can pitch it into, like, a big turn. Just like normally having blues that you want to just like draw and play is not really a thing that Vincent does well because you have to banish a card from a hand every turn to Vincent's effect. So that's already like fewer cards to work with in terms of like what you can pitch and play. And the other factor is that the deck just has a ton of reds in it. Like it's not so easy to pitch, find the resources to pitch and play it three cost card so yeah so as so for those reasons looming doom as a sonata target becomes like much much stronger a card than it was before whereas as compared to like these cheap red cards that i talked about like the flexibility is nice but often you would just rather have the card itself like being able to find Rune Blood Incantation with Sonata is nice, but maybe you would just play like five or six red Rune Blood Incantations if you were allowed to instead. But that's not the case with the Looming Doom. Like, Looming Doom actually becomes a much stronger play when you're getting it with Sonata. So that's, that's very interesting. Um, and then the fact that, like, from a consistency perspective, you don't have to play a ton of copies of Looming Doom, this kind of, like, awkward, bulky card that you can't really cast on most board states like you can just play one or two looming doom have the sonata in your deck that are like decent anyway and then on, on board states where you don't have tons of rune chance and your looming doom wouldn't be very good then you can just use the sonata to get the rune blood incantation instead so that the flexibility there is good as well so the only problem with this theory is that like looming doom itself hasn't been a card that's been used recently i don't think like what it does seems like it would be good 
especially because the hardest matchups for Vincent are decks like Bravo, which is kind of sort of slow, um, not super aggressive decks where you would expect that like this type of card that can build up to deal a ton of damage over multiple turns is like a matchup where you would think that Looming Doom would be good. But even though Vincent needs help in that kind of matchup, you still don't see people playing Looming Doom. So either like Looming Doom just isn't good enough or the, that type of matchup is just like completely unsalvageable anyway. So it's not clear to me that like the buff to Looming Doom essentially by having the option to play it from Sonata, it's not clear to me that that actually makes Looming Doom a playable card or not. But I think it's definitely very interesting to consider um, the fact that effectively now in situations where you would want to play Looming Doom, you can play it for zero mana with go again. Like that's that's a very big power boost to this card. So yeah, that's the um the last Runeblade aura and one of the possible reasons to be excited about this Sonata. So in summary, being able to find Runeblade incantation with it might be stronger than just playing read the runes in your deck. Um that's an interesting way to think about this card that I sort of didn't really consider initially until I thought about it a bit more and then also the fact that it gives you a much stronger way to play Looming Doom than you had before is another possibly strong angle that the deck didn't really have before um, basically it's the combination of these two factors that make the card quite interesting to me and I think I'm going to be testing it at least maybe like two copies just to sort of replace the read the runes and maybe I'll play like one Looming Doom in my sideboard or something just to sort of feel it out and see how it plays but like, I don't think it really significantly like buffs the deck or um, changes it that much especially from the pers perspective of just using it as like an alternate Runeblood incantation um, like if it turns out that it makes Looming Doom into a playable card, then that's very interesting, but I think that the barrier for that to happen is really high. Um, especially because, as I said multiple times, like situations where Looming Doom are good is in situations where you've banked up like lots of rune chance, and that's sort of antithetical to how Vincent usually wants to play. You want to be like generating enough rune chance each turn so you can play your one rune gate attack each turn and sort of like keep the flow going that way. So I see the potential. I'm excited to try it, but I'm definitely not thinking that this is going to significantly change Vincent's position in the metagame or anything like that. So that has been my Sonata Galaxia analysis video. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. This has been Life ITCG signing out.